Okay. I am Budridge, and this is Bash Prompt Extreme. Right, so I thought that in this video I will show you how uh, I have set up my, my bash prompt, you know, this thing in my terminal. So um, let's uh, tidy this up a bit here. So let's do this. Yeah, this is the prompt, you know. Um, every time. I execute a command, for instance here i3 get, it prints the output of the command normally to the um, output of the terminal and then we get this prompt, you know, 41 here, it means it took 41 milliseconds to execute the last command. And this weird part here, that is uh, a short version of the current working directory, which you can get by entering pwd, print working directory. It's also the content of the environment variable p wd so you can do that to know where you are in the shell um, so that's what my prompt consists of uh, and i thought let's make a, a, a video on how you can achieve this got sublime here um, yeah i i had to change my ffmpeg command here that i use when i record these screencasts uh, because I got really choppy output out of nowhere. I don't know what happened really, but when I added this frame rate 15, I got an almost perfect <laughs> output frame rate. Whatever, who cares? Um, but the prompt, the prompt, the prompt. Dots. There we have it. Yes, this is my bash rc file. Now it's a bit messy because I was uh, testing some stuff here. Um, you know, bash rc is located in your home directory, it's just a file uh, which is executed every time uh, a bash shell is invoked. Um, and my bash rc, I have divided it up in, in several different files that I source here with uh, source and then dot bash alias dot bash prompt and uh, dot bash export path. I have all of those files here in a different directory here. So here is the alias file. It just contains a bunch of alias definitions and export that's environment variables and, and uh, path is of course the path environment variable. I have, I have divided it up like that in, in different scripts. That's not default. You, uh, if, if you have like the default settings, then, then you probably have all of this in one file. The prompt uh, definition is is created like this. It it consists of, of uh, three functions here, more or less, the prompt generator and then some timer functions here that are used to to display the the, the time spent. And I have gotten uh, the, a lot of inspiration, or I I have more or less uh, copy pasted a solution here from Stack Overflow. Uh, I did this a long time ago and I have been using the same thing. I just uh, changed uh, the script a little bit uh, uh, from what I had before, uh, just before doing this video because I had to reread the, the, the Stack Overflow and, and research this a bit more so I knew uh, a little bit more what I was talking about. So let's go here to Pale Moon. I have this Stack Overflow uh, uh, thread open and I will link this in the show notes. And here is someone who have more or less the same uh, issue that I had once. How, uh, how to display the time in the bash prompt. But he is only interested in displaying seconds. I would like milliseconds. And then this guy here, Ville Lauricari, which uh, I guess might be uh, from Finland. It sounds like a Finnish name. Um, he have this short example here that shows how to do this, uh, but but it will only display uh, seconds, not milliseconds. But he uses this weird uh, uh, trap timer start debug here, um, and that is um, yeah. I follow this this link here uh, that describes this debug uh, hook that you can set up see if it's here. I will link this as well. The, this had some good examples here on, on how this works. But um, 
Mm -mm -mm. Here, uh, the command arg is executed before every so ev every before every command. This debug. Uh, if if you set the debug trap, then that function will get executed uh, before every simple command. Uh, and that is what I use to to reset the timer here in the prompt script. So you set up a trap like this trap and then the name of a function or a command and what signal signal you're listening to. It's quite common to create traps for uh, interrupt or exit uh, signals so so you can do stuff when when the script uh, uh, stops and, and things like that. But this will get executed every time a command is executed in, in the uh, current shell. And the function or command that it executes is timer start, which happens to be a function here. And all that does is to set this variable timer to the output of the command prompt timestamp, which also is a function that just prints this date uh, thing here. It looks like this. And you need this weird format to get a good, uh, precise millisecond uh, timestamp that you can use here. So that's the first part. Whatever, I think I, 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 I complicated it more than I need, needed there. What we do now is we do this. We comment out this. Let's not source my prompt file at all. And then resource the bash rc. And you do that by uh, just entering a dot and then path to your bash rc file. So if we do this now, we are using this bash rc. But it's still, it still, it doesn't remove any settings, but now we can set this, um, yeah, we'll get back to that, but let's just blank this prompt command uh, environment variable for demo purposes here. So now the prompt will not change. Uh, if I go to a different directory here, config slash i3, uh, we still have the same stupid prompt here. And the prompt is located in a different environment variable called ps1. So you can do this, echo ps1. And that will print the, the prompt string. This will probably look completely different on your system. Same here, I followed a different link. Yeah, I think this is the default bash uh, prompt, but I think uh, many distributions uh, customize these things a little bit. So it might look different on Ubuntu and Arc uh, by default or whatever, but it's just a string. So, and you can change this uh, prompt here. So if we set it to, to the default value, whoops, God damn it. Let's just write it backslash, God damn it. PS1 is equal to uh, backslash s dash backslash v backslash dollar space quote there this is the default prompt and it backslash s that means uh, the current shell which is bash v is the version number and then this dollar here it means that it will print a dollar sign if we are uh, a normal user and if we are a super user uh, root or super user, I, I don't know. Let's see here, uh, here. If the effective user ID is zero, then it will print a, sh uh, a hashtag. Otherwise it will print a dollar sign. So if I would uh, uh, do an SU here, I don't want to do that. I don't want to type my password and stuff, but then it would change to a, to a, to a hash mark instead of a dollar. So that's the default prompt. And as you can see, you can change the prompt here and you got all of, all of these special uh, um, things you can use. So we could use, uh, could uh, do this like uh, backslash u for user, backslash h for host, uh, backslash w for working directory. And then you get the prompt that, that looks like this, you know, and th th this looks like a normal prompt. I think this is something like the default uh, Ubuntu Debian prompt. Whatever, I don't know. Whatever. Okay. But, as you might have seen there, I, I, I used uh, this prompt command uh, environment variable, which is uh, related, but a different thing. 
and we can look here in the default GNU man, man page, which I think I will also uh, 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 link in the show notes. So we can see that the value of the variable prompt command is examined just before bash prints each primary prompt. If prompt command is set and has a non-null value, then the value is executed just as if it had been typed on the command line. Take a deep breath, try to figure out what they really mean here. What they mean is that if prompt command has a value, uh, then that value will get executed. So it's important that the value is a command. So for instance, one command could be just echo. This is a command, right? Now we have a prompt command that's, uh, that's uh, this echo that will print this text. So every time now, before the prompt is, is uh, generated, it will uh, print this this is a command, but it, it prints it before a new prompt is created. And after, for instance here, when we see D, it will first print the output of that or whatever. ls-l will first do that, and then it will print the prompt, the content of, of, of uh, the co prompt command. <clears throat> so it doesn't uh, uh, directly affect the prompt. These are the ingredients we need to create this uh, timer thing in, in the prompt. And I have uh, cheated a bit here and, and made a simple version of this here. Just straight into my uh, bash rc file. And we need both this trap uh, to, to start before, because this trap, it starts before a command is getting executed. And the prompt command is, uh, starts before the prompt is being printed, meaning after the, the command is executed. So by, by setting a timer uh, that, that uh, see how, how long time it is between here, it, you get more or less uh, the exact uh, execution time. It is not perfect. If you want the perfect execution time of a command, then you should use the built-in uh, command time. So you can do time and then, uh, for instance, if we do date here, the, I know, that's the dumbest, dumbest example ever, but if you do that, then it will print the date first here, the output of, of the command, but it will also print the execution time of that command. And we can see that it's extremely fast. It's one millisecond. Or maybe this is even less. Um, if we do time i3 get, then we can see here it took 33 milliseconds. I never remember how these three uh, work really, but whatever. This is uh, the professional way to get the time. But you will see when we are done here that it will correspond very, very well with, with this time command, uh, this dirt act that we use here. So, now we set the prompt command here to prompt generator, which is a function here called prompt generator. So before the prompt is uh, being displayed, uh, it will execute this, this function here. And this function actually sets the variable, variable PS1. And you know, every time you change PS1, it changes the prompt. So, so that's what, what, what this generator does here. Oops, oh, whatever. Um, uh, and we use this debug and stuff to, to get the time. And I know this timestamp here, it's weird. You get this strange thing here. And if we would do that again here now, we get another number. And if we would, um, just to show you, if we do this, take this number and subtract this number from it then we should get uh, the number of milliseconds I, I, I think that it took or something else whatever yeah it's something else that's why I used this cut here before but when I uh, revisited this stack overflow uh, thread here now I saw that someone had, had made a solution that didn't use cut instead they, they um, had some weird math here to get the milliseconds uh, you divide the result of, of, of this timestamp uh, with 1000 and then whatever. You do this. We don't have to uh, understand the math. We're, all we have to know is where the control key, where the C key and the 
V key is located on the keyboard. Everyone knows that. That's what's important. But this is how we get the milliseconds here. So now if I resource uh, um, bash RC here, now we can see we get this prompt. It says 7, 730 here, and then we get all, all of these angle brackets. And if I do, uh, let's do time i3 get, just to see that it works now. Yeah, we can see here, 44 milliseconds, it says here in the real time, and 44 is displayed here as well. We could test something else. Sometimes it, it differs like, like a millisecond or two. So yeah, here now we can see it says 45 here, but 46 uh, in, in, in the time here. And I don't know if this prompt command actually affects the time command here or something. So. If this is very, very, very important for you, then yeah, just be aware. But if uh, uh, time units that are less than like a millisecond doesn't matter in your life, then you will be fine with this. So this is how you do it. And I think we make a break there. Uh, as you can see, it's, it, it doesn't uh, print any, any path here to anything, but we could easily do that. We could just add that backslash w uh, to, to this uh, prompt here. Like backslash w resource bash rc here. And now you can see it prints here the tilde because we are in the home directory. If we're going to config i3, it will print the path to that. So you can use this W and, and uh, those things, the uh, backslash U for user and such. But if you want uh, my, my style of a prompt with, with just the first character, then we have to add uh, some more uh, dirt tags here to the prompt generator. And also, of course, colors and things can also be added and, and you can test for all kinds of things here. I was thinking, I haven't tried this myself, but it shouldn't be a big deal to 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 make a test, a, a, a very simple test to see that we are on our on our default local host, so to speak, or if we are um, um, uh, using SSH into a different uh, machine or something like that. And and if we are, then it might be interesting to print the, the host name or, or something like that. You can do a test like that and have different prompts de depending on the environment. I know that a lot of people, they like to have the git status, like is this a dirty branch or something. I, I, I really don't like that. I, I want the prompt to be as short, minimal as possible so it can fit on like a narrow uh, terminal like this with few columns or a narrow uh, uh, terminal like this with few lines because sometimes I, I just have like three, four lines but it's totally fine when you have a prompt like this you you get the information you need and, and, and everything fits on the screen and the font the prompt in my opinion shouldn't be something that blinks in your eyes you know you it, this is also a kind of a, a type of notification you know some people they use icons in the in the in the prompt they use like a background color so you get these big blocks of uh, bright colors everywhere on the screen i, I I really don't like that and I, I think it's a bad idea for, for several reasons. Whatever, next, uh, next part of this uh, we, we look at how to set up this um, path, short path here and also how to get the colors and stuff like that. It's, it's not a big deal. Thank you for watching, have a great day.